Hello everybody, my name is Ryan or MNR Productions and welcome back to another episode of LEGO Worst to First. If you guys want to see my other LEGO Worst to First videos, go ahead and check that top link down in the description below. It'll bring you to a playlist of all my LEGO Worst to First videos. In this video, we're going to be counting down from the worst to the first or best LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens set. This list will not include micro fighters, poly bags, or con exclusive sets. It's just the sets you see on the shelves that come in a box. There were 16 such sets that were released for The Force Awakens between 2015 and 2017. There have not been any Star Wars The Force Awakens sets released in 2018, and I don't know of any that are supposed to be. We probably won't see any new ones for a while, so this is what we're going to have for the next few years. So if you guys do enjoy the video, of course hit that like button. If you guys would change my worst to first list in any way, let me know with a comment down below, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start out with the 16th best, or the worst, LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens set. For me personally, after a lot of thought, I've decided to put the First Order Battle Pack, the very first First Order Battle Pack, in here as the worst set. I feel like that the minifigure selection was really off here. I don't know what LEGO was thinking by including two different type of officer figures and only one regular First Order Stormtrooper along with one kind of artillery trooper. And that kind of made me really upset because I was really excited to build my army when this set came out and I, I was really let down when I only got one regular First Order Stormtrooper. You also get this what was a pretty cool turret to me, but it's kind of grown on me in a negative way. I don't really love the design of it all that much anymore, and it's just kind of looking dated to me. At 15, I've chosen the Battle on Taco Donna, and here LEGO uses the word battle very loosely because there isn't much of a battle going on. It's Kylo Ren and a couple of Stormtroopers fighting against Finn. I mean, I, I just don't see any battle going on here, you know what I mean? It's a pretty nice design overall for the playset. Like, it, I, obviously it's not supposed to be the castle, it's not supposed to be Maz Kanata's castle, but it's supposed to be a battle scene and for a battle scene there's only one minifigure for one side and he only has a lightsaber it's not like Maz Kanata has a gun or anything to keep fighting back so like you're really limited with what you can do here of course you can blow up some of the scenery and such but again it's not much of a battle unless you've got a bunch of other sets which cost a lot of money too. I thought they did a great job with the Maz minifigure. I loved that you got Kylo Ren and a couple of First Order Stormtroopers. Of course, Finn was pretty good too. However, that was not enough to pull it out of the bottom of the barrel here. Next up, somehow ahead of the previous set, we have the Jakku Quad Jumper. I actually recently purchased this set, and I was actually pleasantly surprised by what I got. You get Rey, Finn, BB-8, Unkar Stug, and a First Order Stormtrooper, so pretty solid minifigure selection. I think they did a wonderful job implementing the ability to make the ship blow up like it does in the movie just before they get to the Millennium Falcon. I think it works wonderfully and you have a lot of room for minifigures in this set actually I think you can fit up to three in the interior even though you only really get the Unkar Stug and First Order Stormtrooper for the interior you do have an extra seat in there so you can fit other stuff in there as well which is really awesome. Next up I've chosen the Resistance Trooper Battle Pack. This one went side by side with the First Order Battle Pack that we just saw at number 16 and I think this is actually a pretty solid battle pack however I feel like all the sets that are ahead of it are better still. I think the Resistance Troopers are pretty cool they have really nice helmet designs they have pretty good torso prints the speeder itself is actually a really nice design. It has a really nice turret design as well. Unfortunately, you can't fit all the troopers into the speeder like you could with the Rebel speeder back in 2008. However, it does work well for the two figures you can fit in it. So one problem I seem to have with the worst of first videos is I'll get a few sets in and I'll get to a set where I'm like, well, this set isn't that bad, but I'm like, but all the other sets are better. So it's like you got to put a set like this this low on the list, unfortunately. At number 12, I've chosen the Wrath Tar Escape, and this one was one I was originally very excited to get, and then kind of sorely disappointed once I actually had it. It's a great playset, don't get me wrong, I'm sure some people get some great playability out of it, but in my opinion, it just doesn't work that well. You can't really pick it up to take it anywhere because all the sections are compartmentalized, so if you pick it up from one end, the other end will just like completely snap off and fall to the ground, and this has been a big problem for me, I just, I can't get behind this set. The Guavian Death Gang members, though, are excellent minifigures, I think the minifigure selection this set is great. The Wrath Tars are a pretty good design made of bricks. I think uh, LEGO did the best they could with that. Of course, you get the older Han Solo and Chewbacca minifigure along with Bala Tick. So pretty solid minifigure selection. But again, I just didn't like the overall design of this set. I don't know what else they could have done for the Wrath Tar escape as a set. Like this is probably the best they could do. I probably couldn't do any better. At number 11, I've chosen Ray's Speeder. This was a really solid speeder design. I think it really well resembles the version that we see in the Force Awakens movie. Of course, you get Ray and Unkar Stug. So pretty okay minifigure selection. I think you could have done without Unkar Stug at all. Maybe it just included BB-8 instead or no second minifigure, just the one minifigure. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there. But anyway, the uh, speeder itself has a bunch of stickers on it, which actually add a lot of good little details. I really like all the things you can hang on to the side of it as well. You can see like a buzzsaw. You can see Ray's staff, a little gun type thing on there. 
you can also open up both the compartments in there to access the interior space which is great you have a couple of stud shooters you have a great area for Ray to be seated you also get a little box that fits inside the center of Ray speeder as well I also do want to note the engine area on this set is very well done and well designed so overall a really nice set in here at number 11 cracking the top 10 Star Wars The Force Awakens sets we have the encounter on Jakku and this is a set that a lot of people do feel is overpriced and I kind of agree however after looking at it for a little while I was able to convince myself that the design of it is actually really darn good I really like the Lugaby sets included I think that it is brilliantly designed it has Tito on top of it of course you also get Ray BB-8 and the disgusting looking Uncar Plot. he is a great minifig I think that the actual like Jakku building there is really well done you actually get a lot of little features in there you have the little entrance to Jakku which is a lot smaller than it would be in the actual movie obviously you could fit like ships and stuff through it obviously not here in the Lego version you can't do that but it is included which is nice you also get this very nice like plastic panel that goes from the top of the thing and kind of curves down very nice inclusion by Lego you also have the window where Ankar tries to buy BB-8 from Ray so you can reenact a lot of good scenes from the movie with this set and that's what I think I really like about it is the ability to reenact scenes from the movie it's included a lot of good little nods to the scene from the movie in such a small package that I was actually able to convince myself that I like this a lot next up we have the first order snow speeder and despite not seeing any screen time in the force awakens I actually thought the set was very well designed and very well priced and it had great minifigures and it gave you some pretty darn good features so of course you get a couple of first order snow troopers and then a first order snow trooper officer which is the same as the others except he has a red pauldron it has these wonderful stud shooters on the sides which allow you to spin it and shoot off the green studs like bang 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 it's really awesome it's got some nice sticker details on the side as well for paneling you can see the chair design in the back is wonderful with those grill pieces I just absolutely love this set it's got a wonderful turret in the front as well it also does have wheels on the bottom which allow you to roll it around on any surface basically to reenact what would have been a scene from the movie unfortunately it never was in the movie so we don't have the ability to reenact a scene from the movie but it is still a really nice set very well designed at a pretty fair price $40 for 444 pieces great minifigs overall a pretty darn good set Next up, we have the Resistance Troop Transporter, which, yes, does look a lot like a B-Wing. However, it's a little bit more beefed up in the center area there. It gives you a little bit of an interior. Of course, you get General Leia and Admiral Akbar in this set, two highlights for sure. You also have a little loading ramp, which allows you to walk your minifigs up and into the ship. You have this large piece in the back, which has a large sticker on it as well to give it a little bit more interior space off the back there. And, of course, the cockpit with its stickers looks pretty darn good. The gun down at the bottom of the ship is pretty darn good as well. Making good use of antenna pieces as well as some spring loaded shooters. The seventh best Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens set is, in my opinion, the First Order Transport Speeder Battle Pack. This was a major upgrade from the original First Order Battle Pack, and of course, getting two First Order Stormtroopers was a great, but the surprise inclusion here was that First Order Flame Trooper. Wonderful to get him in a battle pack. Of course, you also get this blue First Order Officer, which is a little bit different than the other ones, so I was actually pretty happy with that. The speeder itself is a great design. You have a pretty nice area for your troops to sit in you also have the ability to grab those shields and staffs for the first order stormtroopers and basically make them into tr8r which is a great and next up i've chosen the first order transporter 792 pieces 90 dollars in the u.s so it pretty fair price. The highlight of this set for me was getting a bunch of First Order minifigures, two First Order Stormtroopers, two First Order Flame Troopers, and Captain Phasma. Unfortunately, Captain Phasma never came in chrome, or hasn't yet, unfortunately, so she's got this, like, dull gray look to her. The two Resistance minifigures you get are just a couple of Resistance soldiers, male and female. The overall design of the First Order Transporter was actually pretty good. However, it's a little bit inaccurate to the movie in that it's a little bit uh, shorter than it should be. It should be a little bit more elongated, and I've seen people make custom versions of it that are elongated and it looks amazing however i think lego did this to keep the price down and i don't hate the design of it obviously putting it this high in the list you're able to fit four minifigs into the bay of the set there you also get an area where you can put a pilot and also an area where you can have a little gunner on top on those stud shooters which is great you also get a couple flick fire missiles located on the top as well so overall really nice design there's also wheels on the bottom which allow you to roll it on any surface and of course it can fly like it did in the movie so you can just pick it up and fly it around and lastly i do want to mention the engine area which i think is very well designed i loved building that engine 
dungeon area. I actually think I built like six of these sets and it just is so much fun to build that particular part of the set for me. I don't know why. Anyway, next up I have the First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter. I think this is the best TIE Fighter design to date, at least in terms of stability and looks. I think it looks wonderful. I love the red and black accents on this thing. I think LEGO did a wonderful job making it sturdy so that the wings never fall off. You also have the ability to fit two pilots into the center cockpit area of that TIE Fighter. You also get a couple of extra minifigures to have as your ground forces, a First Order crew member, and a First Order officer. So pretty nice minifigure selection. It was a little overpriced at 70 US dollars for 517 pieces. However, I think the design of it was just so good that it makes up for that price discrepancy. And these next two sets are kind of interchangeable, but I did go ahead and make a executive decision to put one in front of the other. At number four, I've chosen the Resistance X-Wing Fighter, the one that comes in gray and blue here. And it actually looks pretty darn good. I like the way this one came out, even though they had already come out with Poe Dameron's X-Wing. This came out just less than a year later, and they did a pretty darn good job of it. They have BB-8, Poe Dameron, Lor Santeca, and a First Order Flame Trooper. Pretty good selection there. You also get a piece of scenery from Jakku for the Flame Trooper to burn up there. So the overall design of the Resistance X-Wing, of course, looks wonderful. You get this little engine piece in the back for Poe to stick in. It has a little sticker on top. Pretty nice engine design as well is pretty sweet. I like the set a lot. And uh, on to the next one, of course, is going to be Poe's X-Wing Fighter in the black and orange color scheme. I've decided that this one is like slightly better. I don't know. It could go either way as far as I'm concerned, but they are pretty much the exact same design as far as the X-Wing is concerned. There aren't many differences in the building process as far as I'm concerned other than the coloration of the set and the minifigure selection. I actually like the pilot minifigures in this set a lot. Of course, Poe Dameron, and then you also get an extra resistance X-Wing pilot, which is great. Also a resistance ground crew member, and it does come with this little uh, yellow ladder and little speeder thing to run around in the resistance space with your resistance crew member, who has a really nice helmet design, by the way. BB-8 is also included, just like the other resistance X-Wing, so overall, I just decided this one was slightly better. And somehow making it to number two, despite its issues with its miscoloration and missing features from Star Wars The Force Awakens, I've chosen Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle. I actually think this is a wonderful set. I think it is very nicely built. It's got a great design, and you know, it's supposed to be in all black. And maybe LEGO will one day revisit this set, remake it in its full black glory, and make it look like an awesome and very menacing ship like it should be, but I think it still looks wonderful as it is. I absolutely love this thing. It's huge. Its wing design is great. You have the ability to fold the wings down just like in the movie. You also have a great interior area for Kylo Ren to sit inside with some of his other First Order members. You have a nice ramp leading down from inside the ship to the ground, and overall I think it's just a really good design with a really cool ship from Star Wars The Force Awakens, and despite it not being the right color and missing the ability to make the wings kind of fold out, I think it's still the second best LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens set, and that's saying something. And if you haven't figured it out already, in my opinion, the best or first LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens set is the Millennium Falcon. This thing is a monster LEGO set. It looks wonderful. It's got great minifigures. Of course, Chewbacca, Han Solo, Finn, Rey, and BB-8 for our heroes. And then, of course, you have a Kanju Club gang member and Tasu Leech. So a pretty darn good minifigure selection overall. The big killer feature of this set, though, is just the iconic design of the Millennium Falcon being brought back. I think this design of the Millennium Falcon is so great because it has the panels on it, which you can individually lift up and access the interior. It is wonderful. You have a couple of spring-loaded shooters located somewhere on the set. You also have the turrets at the top and the bottom. There are lots of stickers that add detail to the set. You have this wonderful cockpit area with this wonderful printed cockpit piece. The interior is just incredibly detailed with lots of little different features from the movie that you can reenact with the minifigs. Overall, that is my favorite LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens set. I just think it's such a wonderful and iconic and well put together design that there's no way it couldn't be first. But let me know down in the comments section below what your favorite LEGO Star Wars Force Awakens set is or if you would have changed my list in any way. I definitely do want to hear from you guys. So again, leave a comment down below. Of course, like the video if you did enjoy and subscribe if you're new to the channel, guys. Thank you all for watching. Check that top link in the description below for my other LEGO Wars the First videos and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.